Hey everyone, in today's lab, I'm going to be demonstrating how to test whether or not different levels of activity have different rates of respiration through the production of carbon dioxide. So this is a test that you may not be able to do at home, but you can watch this video and make hypotheses and gather data from it. Now the materials that we're going to be using can be corrosive and you may only find them in a lab, which is why I'm making this video for you. And obviously with COVID-19, doing any experiments with your mask off is a little dangerous these days. So I'm gonna be showing you in this video today. So to investigate the relationship between the amount of carbon dioxide produced and different levels of activity, we're gonna be using a special solution made with something called BTB or bromothymol blue. Here it is in my little Erlenmeyer flask. Now bromothymol blue or BTB is a chemical indicator, meaning it changes colors in the presence of different pHs. So in basic solutions, or solutions above a pH of 7.6, it's going to be bluish. In acidic solutions, it's going to be yellow. In more neutral solutions, it's going to be more green. So you can see here we have sort of a green, bluish color to get started with. So if you're doing this experiment on your own, you'll first decide what two activities you want to compare. One is a low-level activity, which can be something as simple as reading a book for a few minutes. The next one is a high-level activity, where you want to get the person who's doing the experiment's heart rate up. So for me, I'll probably jog in place for about a minute. So first we're going to put our bromothymol blue solution into a small flask. Then we're going to take a straw and we're going to place the straw into the flask so it's touching close to the bottom. Then what I'm going to do is place aluminum foil over the top so that in case I blow too hard, no bubbles are going to splash back at me but I still want to make a small hole for the straw. So our final setup will look something like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide carbon dioxide into the solution for about one minute by blowing air into the straw. Now the important thing to see here is that we may get a color change because when I exhale, carbon dioxide is coming out of my mouth as a byproduct of cellular respiration, and that carbon dioxide in solution will become acidic as carbonic acid. So if we see a yellow color change, that means there is carbonic acid or enough carbon dioxide has been expelled from my respiration into the solution for us to see a color change. So let's go ahead and get started for one minute. One important thing I almost forgot to mention is that it's important not to inhale. Every time you need to take a breath, remove your mouth from the straw and then exhale back into the straw. All right, that's our one minute timer. And you can see what happened. We have a pretty decent color change to yellow, which means there is acid in this solution. So now it's time for our measurement portion. We're gonna be adding sodium hydroxide or NaOH to our solution. And we're gonna count the number of drops it takes to turn our solution back to our original color. It's that bluish green again. And the number of drops is gonna be the data point that we'll put in a data table. So very carefully take your aluminum foil off, take your straw out, and remember, NaOH can be corrosive, so you want to make sure you're handling this very carefully if you're using this at home. All right, let's go. One. Oh, well, that didn't take very long. <laughs> we'll swirl it around a little bit, and it's still kind of greenish, so we will do two. And swirl it around again. And let's see, it is staying blue. All right, so that was two drops. So now we're gonna run this experiment again, but this time we're gonna be doing a high level activity. I told you my high level activity is gonna be running in place for one minute. So let's get that set up. Now before you exercise, make sure your bromothymol blue is set up again back to the same color you had it as before. If you don't have the materials to set up a new solution, you can use the previously used solution, but your data may vary because you've already added sodium hydroxide to it. So I set up a new solution here. I have a new piece of foil and a new straw ready to go. And I'm going to set the timer for one minute while I jog in place. Here we go. All right, that's time. You want to quickly get your experiment set up again. If you're doing this in a group, it's good to have someone get the materials ready to go as quickly as possible. I'm gonna get my new straw and my foil. And I'm gonna set my timer again for one minute. Remember, do not inhale, just exhale.
All right, that is time. Now we're gonna do the same data collection again. So carefully remove your straw and your foil and get out your sodium hydroxide. And we're gonna count the number of drops it takes to turn our solution back to that bluish green color. All right, you see it's very yellow right now. That's one drop. Not quite there yet, still kind of greenish yellow. Two drops. Three drops. All right, looks like that time it took three drops of sodium hydroxide to get it back to that blue color. All right, so that's the data for your lab. If you want to fill this out on your own data table, you can. If not, you understand how the experiment will work once you get back to class if you're going to do it for yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you later.